Shalom, good evening to my awarded friends, honorable former Secretary of Defense, friend of Israel, Mr. Donald Rumsfeld. Welcome. To my dear friend in the Likud party, as well as in the government, Dr. Yuval Steinitz, and for the youngest, the Vital Azulai, uh, all, of them, all of you are being awarded today. Ambassador Ron Prosor, and last and not least, dear American friends of Likud, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored and privileged to be here with you this evening among friends who know how to appreciate uh, what is done in Israel. And I believe and I feel like I'm awarded for many, many soldiers and officers who served and who are serving even this minute in the defense of our country, on the ground, at sea, and in the air. <clears throat> but I'm not going to talk tonight about uh, military security, which is highly important. I'm just coming to New York from Washington to discuss the challenges ahead of us, the challenges for the State of Israel, the challenges for the United States, the challenges for the free world. And knowing very well the American friend on Likud, you deal with the right thing, education. As I believe that in order to meet the challenges in, ahead of us, there is a need for education. As I found that our internal challenges, either here in America, in Israel, and elsewhere, the main challenge is confusion, lack of clarity. And if you don't have the right diagnosis regarding the challenges ahead of us, you can't have the right prognosis. And we hear today about the Arab Spring. For, from Jerusalem, it seems more like an Islamic winter. But this is part of the conceptual failure which we go through when we deal either with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the threat of Islamic Jihad, or the Iranian threat. And when our way of thinking is dominated by either wishful thinking, naivete, or in certain cases, patronism, believing what is good for the Middle East, they are all to fail. And we heard again and again, as an example of misconception, that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is a call for instability in the Middle East. Is it really the case? So what is the linkage between the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the uprising in Tunisia? Or the revolution in Egypt? Or the civil war in Syria? But even without this specific event of the last year, what is the linkage between the Sunni Shia conflict, which dominates the uh, situation in Iraq, dominates the situation in the region, which is about hegemony in the region between Iranian Shia, Sunni Wahhabis, Muslim Brotherhood, and other parties in the region? What is the linkage with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? 
And if you believe in this misconception that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is a call for instability, you probably come out with another one. Like you know what is the solution for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Based on Israeli concessions, which we went through in the last 20 years or so. And failed. As actually when we deal with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the political discourse is dominated by many, many misconceptions regarding what is the conflict is all about, whether it's just about territory and might be concluded by territorial compromise, or about the reluctance to recognize our right to exist as a nation state of the Jewish people. And the latter is the right diagnosis of the challenge. And now we deal with the Iranian threat. And if we try to identify any call for instability in the Middle East, no doubt this is the main generator and instigator for instability in the Middle East. And you can find their fingerprints in a very negative manner. In Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Lebanon, in Palestine Arena, in Bahrain, in Yemen, and in Latin America as well. And the conflict is not between Iran and Israel, as it appeared in certain circles in the West. The conflict is between the Iranian jihadist regime and the Western civilization led by the United States. Israel is considered by them as a minor Satan. America is a great Satan. America is a Western civilization led by the United States. It makes a difference. And at a certain point in history, we have to confront the threat. And not to try to bypass it. And not to postpone it to the next year, to the next decade, to the next generation, or whatever. And we believe that in this regard, we are now in a defining moment, an historic moment, in which we have to make the decisions. And we do believe that there is this messianic apocalyptic regime in Tehran should be put in a dilemma, should face, face a dilemma, whether to go on with the wrong activities, on top of it, their determination to acquire military nuclear capability or to survive. And by one way or another, the military nuclear project in Iran should be stopped. And the sooner is the better. <laughs> and we hope that Western like-minded people, and especially Western like-minded leaders, we will not avoid, we will not escape the hard decision to be taken in the very near future. Having said that, talking about education, without any connection and with connection to the external threats, education is a cornerstone in any national security posture, especially in Israel. And what the American Food Friends of Likud is doing in educating people, bringing them to Israel, to witness this is not an apartheid state and the problem is not occupation since 67 and we have the right to live everywhere in the land of Israel, our strong And I'm confident about the future of the state of Israel. And my confidence based on knowing very well the Israeli youngster, having the unique privilege to lead them since I was a soldier to the chief of staff. Very talented youngsters, highly motivated youngsters, highly educated. And my confidence is 
based on what I know about the Israeli people, about their brains and their hearts. And this is our secret. Knowledge and spirit. As uh, Yuval Steinitz talked about the, our economy, our strong economy is based today on our knowledge. Although we found gas in the Mediterranean, we don't exploit it yet. Hopefully, we'll exploit it in two years' time. <coughs> so far, it is based on knowledge. <coughs> State of the art, science, technology, sophisticated agriculture, high tech, it's a people. And my confidence is based on what we have achieved in about 120 years of Zionism and less than 64 years of independence. And my confidence is based on knowing very well with my personal perspective that my grandparents who perished in the Holocaust prayed every year, next year, in Bin Jerusalem, the Shana Ba'a, Birushalayim Abnuya. They didn't imagine that only three years after the end of World War II, we will have an independent state, we will have Jerusalem as a capital, and we will have today a government in Jerusalem which is committed to build Jerusalem and not to divide it. My confidence is based on an unbreakable bond between Israel and the United States. With all disputes which we went through in the last three years, this is an unbreakable breakable bond. And it's my opportunity to thank very much to Donald Rumsfeld, to serve served as a Secretary of Defense while I served, I, I will be serving, I was serving as a Chief of Staff. And when I'm talking about unbreakable breakable bond, I know what I'm talking about and I'm sure that Donald knows as well what does it mean between the defense establishment. And my confidence is based in our righteousness. And my confidence is based on what we see here this evening. American friends of Likud, devoted, committed, supporting the state of Israel. With this spirit, I am sure that together, Israel and the United States are going to prevail. Am Israel Chai. Thank you.